friends good evening i hope you guys can hear me okay are we filming we're filming i haven't filmed in a minute welcome back to the fancy dope tea today's episode i'm so like self-conscious right now about this mic if y'all know me y'all know i have been struggling with this mic and i'm whispering to be honest there's a lot of people home today and i'm not in the mood I wanted to sit down and film because I haven't filmed in a long time a Zoom videos tea um, or anything. We did recently suffer or go through a loss of our pet who we saw like our son. Um, I unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to um, put him on the channel. Sorry, if y'all know me, y'all know I have allergies. I'm not crying right now, but it has been a sad situation but our pet had cancer for a while and he just like honestly reached his final final part of life and um rest in peace to Ben and I don't know if it's gonna be posted before or after this but um I just sat down I made a video where I just sat down and I filmed on my phone just talking about it because it's honestly, I'm not really good at dealing with death. Um, I don't know if it's just how my parents acclimated it to me or if that's just who I am as a person. But, um, yeah, girl, it's been really hard for me. And I'm looking around because I'm just thinking about him. I miss him so much. Um, and it was very hard to film videos at times um, because he was sick and I knew he was sick. And trying to be happy on a camera when you know someone you love is sick is really hard so um with that being said um go check that out i think the video really it really can help anyone going through a loss right now honestly like it's really a video made for one person going through a loss to another person going through a loss like it doesn't even have to pertain to a pet but um yeah i don't want to make this video sad um, I do know I have good news for y'all today so there's that and I do have updates so I got like another light so it's giving very studio vibes right now I can't see because I usually when I film something I look at the viewfinder but I don't know I might have to adjust this lighting because weird shadows behind me I don't know if I really like that vibe of that and you got like the shadow of the mic on my top but it is October happy October um I also have this cool little steamer situation. I can put the website down in the link, but it was kind of cheapy, so don't come for me. It's not like an expensive one. And I have some flowers here that my honey gave to me like a while back, and they're kind of getting a little dusty, honestly. So I wanted to make use of them. You know when the water's getting murky and stuff, but yeah, girl, I know I haven't been here in a while. And sometimes y'all don't know that because I have backup footage, so it's like, you know, but um, like I said, happy October. I got my little, my little nice earrings on. Okay, period. And like I said, I got this mic to work. Okay, I'm gonna be so sick if I film this whole thing and then it doesn't work at the end. I'm gonna be like, girl. But yeah, I'm also filming a Zanji does tea with my new lens that I bought a while back. Um, I did film only one video with this lens, and honestly. It looks really nice, so I don't know how the Zanji does T will look once it's done. Like I said, I look at my videos through a viewfinder. Some YouTubers have like a bigger screen next to them to save time and just to see. Um, and I also took autofocus off in hopes of y'all hear that? Yes, I'm like period. Um, I took the autofocus off in hopes of like a blurring situation, so it should be on my face and like the three things in front of me. But as you know. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my series, Angie Does See. If this is your first time here, this is kind of how we do it in the beginning. We just kind of chit chat, give a little life update. Did I ever tell y'all I graduated college? I don't think I ever made that announcement. I graduated college. Um, so yeah, my life now is like I'm really going through like that depression, like graduation post post graduation depression where nobody wants to hire you. It's so stupid. Maybe I'll like talk about it in another video but it's so dumb it's really you know what it is it's like people want your experience to hire you that's the only time they want to hire you. it's really it's really stupid but 
If you've never been here before, I go by Zandy Deals on YouTube and I always have a drink when I do the series and today's drink is a smoothie. This is a blueberry mango smoothie with almond milk. This is a and spare me. Please spare me y'all if I have blueberry in my teeth, like please. And then I got some cute little press-ons. I did not make these. I make press-ons, but I don't really talk about it that much because I like to keep them separate. But I'll put my business down below if you're curious. But as you know, Zanji does tea. Episode five today. I never haven't shown y'all this, but got this cute little pencil situation going too. But yeah, girls, as you ever said, I'm here. I go with Zanji Does. This is my series, Zanji Does Tea. And on this series, we are meant to sit down and receive submissions. And you send your story in, you got a problem, your baby mama's being aggy, your cousin's doing the most. You tell me, and girl, I'll give you advice on camera. Um, and then the point is for people to also comment down below and give advice as well. <laughs> Um, if you want other YouTubers that I look up, or not look up to, but who I take reference from, who inspired me to do this series, I'll put them on the screen right here. Um, I was also going to say, the Voodoo Child, who's done this for like a long time, she's doing some scary stories, like a segment like that, and I'm not going to lie to you, I kind of want to do the same thing, so I'll give her credit, but yeah, um... Because we haven't done these, like, what's it called? We've been doing these for a while, and if you don't know, because I don't get submissions, because the platform is still a little small, our audience is still a little small, I go over to Reddit, and I grab stories from there. I keep it very anonymous, and then I give my advice on camera. Sometimes I'll go on my app and give my advice after, or sometimes I like to, like, when I'm just chilling, not even doing anything, I'll just go on the app and give people advice, because... I like to give people advice and my minor was in psychology and I didn't want to pursue an art therapy job but I'm thinking about it like I said you know how I said in the beginning I have good news yeah somebody submitted a story okay I did not read the story yet I just know that there's a story I haven't checked since then I don't know if there's more but, um, I've been talking about it a lot on my Instagram. If you want to follow me on Instagram, here's the username. Um, I simply saw the email and I told them, hey, thank you for submitting. I'm currently in the process of editing episode four. This story will be mentioned on episode five. So, hey, girl. Hey, boy. If it's you, your story is getting read today. And I kind of want to save it for the end because we have been doing the Reddit, you know, and, um, save the big first official person for the end. And then hopefully as more people come keep leaving them toward the end two stories at the end three four five and then we just won't have to do reddit anymore you know what i mean but reddit is fun you know reddit people be going crazy on there people be going crazy on there and also i don't know if i'm whispering um because i feel like my boyfriend told me like put the mic down like the volume and just speak into it so i'm just using my regular inside voice so for today's video I never pre-pick these, honestly, I just see what looks funny or what looks crazy and I save them and I don't usually ever like have a certain amount set of how many I read per episode, but I do like three or four. Let's get started. So I'm scrolling down here, my saves. This is a really short one. Let's just start it off nice and sweet. The title of this is, do you tell your boyfriends when a guy hits on you? Comment down below what your immediate reaction is to that. Do you? Do you not? Girlfriend, boyfriend, same sex relationship, whichever. Do you? Comment down below. I'll say my opinion at the end. Um, they write, I'm in my first relationship ever. And I have some guys hitting on me and I reject them. Okay, pause. Were they hitting on you before? Or is this because you got a man now and everybody want to holla at you? What's the tea? What's the tea? Um, and I reject them, of course. And I don't know. Sometimes I'd like to tell my boyfriend about it. But I don't know if it's that, like, healthy for a relationship, question mark. I mean, I want to tell him because he's my friend and just, like, for reassurance, I guess. So, here's what people are saying down below. As long as you don't do it in a toxic way, then it's fine. Making it toxic would be, like, bragging. I usually tell him, like, this is my best friend. 
Yeah, a lot of people saying hi to him because he's my best friend. Depends on the guy. Sometimes I have to gauge it out. Yeah, because he likes it and he knows he can't have me. Okay, so yeah. Um. Oh, someone said it depends on how serious your relationship is. Mm. So my my answer for that, I always tell my partner, um, just not even to brag, but more so like, I don't want to get caught up in nothing, really. Like, I have found that when people are in relationship guys or girls whatever when you're in a relationship people like to jump in and like play these little tricks to try to get people caught up and we're really in a um society or time frame generation where people um are partaking in caught up culture or also cheating culture nobody wants to be loyal i don't know what that's all about so um i I keep it very, I mean, some people might be like, you're really rude, like, you don't have to do that with guys, I keep it very sweet and short, like, you're not my man, and I'm, like, I'm very dry to anyone except for my man, who's a guy, because I don't need anything being misinterpreted, I don't, you know, and, like, this person, I'm also in my first relationship, I just don't need anything misconstrued, this has been going very well for me, and I don't need you know it's like it's very innocent things can get misconstrued ladies if you're out there like i know there's probably that one nice girl out there i'm the nice girl too who is like oh like there's this one guy that's always commenting on your stuff saying wow i love your outfit today girl okay period kill him okay sis okay why are you plotting on me that's the vibe you're giving you're plotting on me you're trying to reel me in you're trying to take the back seat so when my man gets out you're like girl he wasn't meant for you anyway and now you think you're playing friends and <sighs> my mind just works really fast so i would be like no we're not even gonna be friends okay only friends that i have that are males are family members and some people might find that toxic my partner has never told me not to have guy friends i just don't want it i don't want the drama i could do without a lot of drama in my life so i just don't do it like, do I tell my boyfriend when, like, a stranger is hollering at me? Yeah, girl. Like, you know, I'm like, hon, why was somebody telling me my butt looks? I know no one's ever said that. But anyway, um, I'll tell him, like, as a joke. And we'll laugh about it. And he'll be like, oh, okay. Like, you think, whatever. It's like dumb stuff. But, like, you know, when a guy is secure in himself, he should be fine with that. He should trust you, trust the relationship, and trust that you're not going to go off with the first person that's gonna holla at you you know what i mean so that's my advice for that have you ever been in a situation let me know in the comments down below keep it moving okay i think we can all relate to this one that i'm gonna read today because i feel the same and to a certain extent so this story says i miss my childhood so bad it makes me depressed that's the title so they write, we all know how shitty it is growing up. Yeah. You lose your innocence, naiveness, and being free. When I was a kid, I just remember me watching cartoons when I woke up on the weekends, not having to worry about so many things. I was just free. Now I feel like I have anxiety about so many things, money-wise, how to pay rent, what I want to do in the future, making sure I'm not making any huge mistakes that could potentially harm my future. There are just so many things that go through my head every day and I'm so tired of it. It just makes me depressed. The only thing I do is just think, the only thing I do is just think about my childhood and how easy I had it and how I took it for granted. I'd do anything to go back to those old days. Does anyone feel the same? And if so, how do you cope with this feeling? <clears throat> so let's see what people are writing. I empathize with this. All of our childhood were told growing up sucks. That's true, that's what we're told. I wish I knew how to cope with this too, I don't know. Channel your inner child. Feel the exact same way. Regression therapy. Some are all really long. Um, response. Don't worry, past is gone. Future isn't here yet. Okay. So I've been reading comments for a minute. I'm just getting stuck in it because I'm also just feeling the same way. Like, um, I feel 50 50 about it. I do. I do miss my childhood like you guys. Or this person. <clears throat> this person writing but i think i fear more elderly years there's people that like fear the fact that they're never gonna be young again i fear like elderly years i don't know why like i'm talking like 70 ish years old what i have to say is and like 
even thinking about the feel of death around me right now um death is very scary and my partner has really been helping me with that because he's very like I don't know how but he's just like he's so numb to it he's just like we're here and we're gone like that's just how it is <laughs> um and I'm just so like I'm very spiritual I wouldn't say religious but I'm very spiritual so um for me personally what I've been dealing with is like the unknown like where where did Ben go my pet where did Ben go after um he passed like where did he really go you know or and I have been having dreams of like where is he like it's very sad and to talk about but um it, I think it I, I'm someone that's very black and white about life and I'm like why can't someone just have the right answer why is it so many religions and why can't we just all know the truth like why you know and then it fears me to think okay so that's it like you know there's people that wish that they don't come back you know they have a rare incarnation there's people that wish they don't come back truly I don't mind I don't think I'd mind coming back but I've also never lived my whole life and I'm a firm believer that I've been here before because this all just doesn't I feel like I've been here before you know I don't know how to explain it but people that feel that way can understand what I mean you know so I guess I don't resonate fully with the childhood um missing it um because I feel like I've done that before but I guess my advice would be like I don't know I'm someone that really looks forward to the future to being a mom to being more older than what I am today and I know I just kind of contradicted myself but like you know what I mean like the parts of adulthood where you're still learning because I feel like elderly is you already know everything and you're like now what you know what I mean um I feel like for you if you want to have children in the future think about the the way you can incorporate the happy moments of your childhood into your children like i used to like when i was a teenager around maybe like m would feel more this way i'm missing my childhood because yes everything is more simple and you know yes you have more free time and stuff but i've noticed and learned that you can still do the things you used to do as a child um there's just more awareness around it people some people grow up and they stop watching cartoons because they think they're too young to do it you can keep watching cartoons whatever age you want um having sleep days in when you're younger you can still do that on weekends you have a mental that's what people mental health day or sleeping in for mental health this is the same thing you're sleeping in you're taking care of yourself um i feel like your childhood is never really gone it's like in you and for me honestly i feel like it's still in me and i i have more trauma so i don't know what this person may be going through so parts of my childhood i would not like to relive um but there's parts of my childhood that i'm so happy i went through because i can take it with me and teach my kids about it like for example my grandma used to buy me this really big like i'm talking like bigger than this screen <laughs> i'm dramatic like a really big coloring book and um all i remember was like the snow white one that's all i remember because like, i know there were so many other ones but i think the snow one snow white one was my favorite and i just loved coloring them and i don't think i ever finished a full coloring my grandma would help me color sometimes like what page i was working on and i can't wait to see if they still make that in the future you know what i mean to give to my kids like i guess there's also growing pains as well like that people go through and i think you might be going through that as well or if you're watching this video and you resonate with this we go through this growing pain stage and i went through that like last year um it hurt like physically it hurt my body was numb i was just like I i'm not young anymore like i'm a whole adult like you know and and there's fear that comes with that and there's like sadness because you can't just you know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to say that part of me is dead. But I feel like it's dead. Like, I feel like I'm much more in an adult place. You know what I mean? And not saying that if you miss your childhood, you're immature. But more so, if you miss your childhood, you can still recreate parts of that. Like, I realized when I have more of my freedom, 
um, and I left my toxic situation and I could drive wherever I wanted to, whatever time, like I, even recently, I go to places that make me happy. I go to places that remind me of my happiest times and my childhood moments. I like to drive by certain places that I used to go that really make me happy. I like to drive to the beach. When we're kids, we just want to go to a certain place all the time, but we can't always go. I just love thinking about the beach and just showing up there. I don't even like the water like that. I'm scared of the beach at night. I'm really making no sense sometimes, but you know, it's like taking what you miss and reclaiming that for yourself and getting creative with it as well. And I think we also have to think about the beauty in growing up, you know, like I feel like this is a very passionate and very like sad or like relaxed episode versus my other ones which are very like drama filled. But um <clears throat> what was like I forgot my my train of thought. Oh, there is like excitement in knowing what's next, you know, and going through your next stage of life and I know there's sadness in knowing that you can't go back. But I've had to even myself sit down and remember, like, if I had done anything, even like one second different, life could have been completely different for me. If I didn't fill up a water bottle before going to work in 2010 or something, I don't know, I'm making the year up. I don't even know what age. I don't right now what age I was in 2010. If I didn't fill up a water bottle, didn't go late to work that day, I wouldn't have received a text from thing because I would have said something differently you know things like that like you have to think about that and really look forward to the future i realize when you look forward to the future and make goals for the future you don't sit thinking about what you could have changed before then so that was a long one but yeah that one's really got me thinking like i kind of just realized with you on camera like i've matured and that's a part of me that i understand is done but it can be recreated um and the beauty is you know people don't really i don't know why they don't believe in photo albums anymore but my favorite thing is to look at my baby pictures and think about that little girl and think about my memories i like to think about them while i still have them i have this fear that i'm gonna get dementia when i'm older so i constantly rethink situations in my head um but um Going back to those photos, bring you back those memories and they remind you like who you once were and who you are now and you shouldn't love them both, honestly. So that's my advice for that person. I don't know, that just made me kind of like sad and happy because you know, like I'm excited to be a mom one day and you get to show your kids like cool stuff you learned as a kid and traditions and you know like i sometimes make myself the same meal i used to like as a baby like i'm not kidding like it's all about just remembering and recreating um yeah let's switch it up let's switch the vibe up in this in this episode okay the title of this is my mother wishes my brother and i were because we called her out for committing fraud i hope i didn't read this before but um i feel like i didn't comment down below do you know any family members that be scheming that be doing little things let me know so this person said they didn't post any like text they just posted a screenshot of a text message and the person is texting their mom and they're saying the person texting i'm assuming this is her the girl or their daughter um the daughter goes, hey, apparently you use Blank's name for the gas app, Blank. The gas company said they're still an outstanding balance. We need you to pay that or we're going to have to file a police report. <laughs> Mom responds, do what you do, bro. <laughs> he gave permission, but lose my mother number or I'll file a screening order. Don't contact me ever again. And then they go, well, he's saying he didn't. Plus, when the account was open, he was underage. However, if you don't want to work with us, then you're leaving us no choice. But So it sounds like already, I ain't done with the text, but it sounds like already, like, y'all already have a messed up relationship. So you know how this woman goes. I'm assuming this is the older sibling messaging this mother, and it seems like y'all know how it go. Y'all know how it be. And you're being nice enough to give them a heads up, hey, mom, like, you're doing your bullshit again um 
and I'm letting you know, like, this is what I have to do because we need our money back. So, and I think that this person did the right thing by, I guess, letting them know. Because I, for me, police are scary. And I mean, I'm saying if I was the frauder, is that even a word? The scammer, I would want a heads up. I don't, I don't even see myself in that position. But if I was the other person, I would do the same thing. Like, hey, like. I know you're being fucking annoying, but can you, you know? Mom goes, oh, well, he agreed and that's all I needed. He's responsible for that bill, so handle your business as I stated. Leave my fucking number. I don't give up what you do. Hell, I'll go to jail for a false report. Kiss emoji, laugh emoji, do you? The sibling responds, how is a minor with no job responsible for a bill? That doesn't even make sense. Do you have his permission in writing? Guess not. All right. Just avoid using our information and we're going to take the necessary steps to get this fixed. Good luck. And the mom goes, look, little boy, do what the F you gotta do. And the person responds, why are you being so hostile? I was trying to resolve this issue with only us, but you're being difficult. They wrote F you and your F up sibling. Y'all owe me and yes I do have that on writing. So leave me the F on period. I wish y'all would just die all three together. Let's see what people said. I hope you filed the police report. She's clearly lying. There's a report. There's zero percent chance your brother would be held liable. Well she's darling. Oh so the person that posted this put an update. This was last year and everything has been resolved now. She hired a good lawyer and managed to only have to pay the amount open on the account for the stuff in my name. I was unable to prove that she was the one who opened this. So she got it off. I truly believe in karma though. So one day she'll get what's coming to her. I also want everyone to know that my and my brother's quality of life has drastically improved. We live safe to and I have a beautiful wife whose family has accepted us with open arms. Her mom especially has showed us exactly how mothers are supposed to behave and she generally goes out of her way to spoil us and shows that she cares. I wish I could have grown up with her, but at least I know not how to treat my children. Somebody worded it nicely. Your mom wants to leave misery, hatefulness, and pain, but you don't have to allow her to make your life the same. So, I can understand where this person is coming from, what they're doing. My camera's like, Focus on the calendar behind me, like days. Oh my god. Okay, I think we're good now. I hope. Um, I understand what this person's going through, and let me just say, it's not the best when a parent has horrible communication skills. Now, what's even more or worse is the fact that they this parent went a step further to scam you and put you in legal trouble that is just so unfair comment down below if you've had a situation like this if you feel comfortable saying and haven't said this whole video if you have anything similar to this please send a story down below at the email on the screen oh my god i'm like off today i don't know what it is like i thought i was ready to film i don't know if i'm not i mean i'm still upload this but bro Anyway, um, here's the thing, and I know some people might resonate with this, and then other people might be like, don't say that, you know. This year, this generation, this, gen yeah, this generation of people, I've noticed a lot of us are speaking up about maltreatment, and when family members are not the best, and when family members show their true colors and other family members are accepting of that information and they want to be helpful in any way that they can be and then other family members are like what the god doing me i see none speak none like you know what i mean like oh i, I seem like this so whatever um or this person helps me and i'm sorry they don't help you so i can't help you you know what i mean I just want to say I encourage you to always speak up um, and it could be your mom, it could be your dad, it doesn't have to just be like a sibling rivalry or whatever, always speak up for yourself and always have a plan B in situations like this um, with like bad family members and like 
um, don't feel like a loner. Um, a lot of times I felt like no one else was going through what I was going through, but um, people out there are apparently, yeah, going through the same ish. And you just have to find your people and you have to just reparent yourself, honestly. Like, that's what I've been finding. Um, and once all that grief is gone and there will still be sad days, you can truly see the light. But I feel like keeping people around that are miserable like this is only going to harm your next generation, your the babies you bring in. So, you know, choose wisely. I'm glad you moved out of state. Comment down below and you're best for this person. But I'm glad this person moved out of state, was able to find, I hope, a healthy lover, healthy love life. And, yeah, like... I'm glad you took legal action. Never be afraid to be honest with yourself and take the legal actions you need to take. You know, I'm very like, this is me more so to the audience and to this person. Like, always trust your gut. Always, if you feel like something is wrong, it's probably because it is. And talk to somebody, you know, and have a therapist. A therapist is very helpful. Very helpful. But she tried it. You heard her in the text. She was like, do what you want, bro. That's because she thought you were capable of doing what you finna do. And that's just how it is sometimes. That's just how it is sometimes. So, oh my god, this one's embarrassing. It's long. Okay. Let's read this one. And then the last one. Can we? The first submission. Like, Y'all got me gas. Stop. Okay. So, let me... I feel like I'm scared, like, if I turn the AC off, like, the volume's gonna mess up. Whatever. Ugh, I'm just so over this mic situation. Y'all know. Y'all know what I've been dealing with. Oh. So, I have this app on my phone to turn off the AC. Don't. Don't think I'm bougie, y'all. This is not me. This is all my man. Look at this mess. I don't even want to mess it up. Just, like, focus, but. Oh, I just turned it off. Um. But yeah, girl, let's get into it. So, this one's titled, The Time I Fucked Up by Lying on My Resume and Getting Caught Right-Handed Mid-Interview for a Job I Was Already Underqualified For. Comment down below if you've ever lied in a resume and then also went to the job interview. I have yet to do that. I don't think I want to ever do that because if I get caught up lying on it, like, like, I'm already throwing up right now, like, thinking about it, like, y'all don't cringe, like, there's, like, the same, like, tu no tiene vergüenza, like, you're not embarrassed, that's what I be thinking of when people do crazy stuff like that, but, um, this person said, this actually happened maybe seven years ago, but the pain is still so raw, I can imagine days it's like the memory is literally burned into my conscious as a reminder that no matter how bad things are, at least it's not as bad as that day. No, like, that was really a lot. When people do this, remember, this is a very much a low. Um, I let down every single person I knew. Oh, my God. When I was, like, 20... When I was like 20, I had just graduated with a sparkling world of possibility as a sportscaster. Bro. I had somehow managed to create a position for myself with a team in professional sports franchise, doing pieces for the Jumbotron and their YouTube channel and blah, blah, blah. In 1982, camera from 1982 horrible video editing software okay now i am and i let's see okay now i am and have always been more of an analytic thinker and my interest in in all of i'm sorry i'm struggling i don't know what's going on the ac just got me like um now i am and have always been more of an analytical thinker and my interest lie in in all of this was more so related to the actual analysis and advanced statistical posturing of amateur players, not the creative aspect of video editing cutting footage. So anyway, 
and the cross of working this job where the big focus was being on camera um yada yada i met the director of scouting of the team and began talking to him in between periods when i'd bring them the period summary as a big fan of his growing up and definitely did not hide that well so i guess you know the team the director of the team is like known and because they're in sports i'm assuming this probably like popular in their area um he thought i was cool and just let me chill around him is what he said um i can be pretty chatty i used every second that i could with him to say make sure i was talking that good talk um he eventually allowed me to put my input in like um certain meetings and stuff okay so we ended up being a good team but about but about two-thirds of the way to the season he was called back um to change it in his position or something um so that to do like reorganization within the job okay so i try to take advantage of the situation ask him if i can use him as a reference work for some jobs i was applying to one of these was at a huge national network okay give me fox 25 <laughs> um so i call him let's see first He was too nice to say no. So when he asked the guy, he said no. He said yes. Um, so I guess the guy calls and they are like, yes, like he's giving. Like the new company is like, we love that. Yeah, let's interview him because his manager put him on. And then I, he's like, I prepared my answers. I bought a new suit. I worked on my elevator hitch and he was like i'm so proud of myself i'm gonna be networking period that's what you should be thinking so i go in for an interview and he's asking me all these questions that i already knew the answers to i made some jokes he was laughing a little too hard <laughs> um So then the interview goes, okay, like, you know your stuff, but before we go forward, I just want to clarify X, Y, Z. And um, he's like, yeah, I have, I have major experience in editing and stuff. And amongst the fluff, he was saying, like, I suck at that shit. And then, um, so right now he's lying and saying, girl, I know that thing back, or back and forth. How do people say front and back? Um, he's like perfect. So the interview was perfect. We saw that on the resume, but I just want to clarify that you're comfortable working here, cause you know a lot of not a lot of young grads get this position. Okay. Um, and then he goes, yeah, I have years of experience. And then he goes, this is I think the interview's ending. He goes, okay, so now that that part's over. So he's like, now that this part's over, this guy's going to take you to the editing room and we're just going to do a few clips to see what you got. <laughs> and then I guess he started freaking out and he's like, so the person running this realizes that now they have to do the job as part of the freaking interview. And this is why you don't lie on your resumes or in interviews, because they will do this. They will pull up on you like, OK, can we just see Can we just have you as a shadow for today? That's what they like to call it to scam you to do unpaid work but let's see so he's like putting the dialogue about what happened he goes are you ready and the guy's like yeah i'm ready when you are like i guess they're showing him the clips and um this guy's looking at the keyboards and he's like what is what and so in the midst of him because he's just putting a lot of work here i didn't realize that sorry guys but he is um he hit a random button hoping for the best and he ends up deleting the freaking file that was recording last night's broadcast or whatever and the guy starts panicking the interviewer starts panicking um and then this guy the guy writing this was about to start crying and then i want to see how it ends because so okay so what ends up happening is the interviewer sends him to the director's office <laughs> i literally like can i go home i'm sorry about this y'all 
yeah so he's into the director's office and the woman is like that she runs the whole place and she's just like hey like you really seem qualified but i don't think you want this job is what their assumption was and they were like he doesn't remember what happened after that um but they were like trying to give him a lecture about why it's important to know what you're doing and blah blah, blah. And he like zoned out and then remembers just going back to his freaking house and like walking past everybody and everything in there and not looking at anyone and he said i spent the next three to six months ducking everybody so i didn't have to explain how hard i ruined this okay yeah a lot of people are like why this was very annoying to read <laughs> so it wasn't just me i was honestly struggling i hope this isn't the first time you're seeing me on youtube because you're probably like why are you doing the series and you can't read babe no i can read that was just very like a hard read um not that i can't read oh my god i feel so dumb right now but anyways um you know when people like write a lot of extra words that don't need to be written yeah point is everybody's saying giving him more advice and oh i would have left after this i would have left after that here's my advice and comment down below like i said if you've ever lied on a resume and see did it ever work for you let us know or send an email to the email below send a story but um i have what's it called no i have honestly i'm like guys i'm feeling a little like lightheaded right now i wonder if this like mist is like giving me this like you know what i mean because this spearmint i don't know if it's like chilling me out i don't know i'm so confused can y'all comment down below and tell me if that's supposed to happen it's like chilling me out like cbd chilling me out let's turn this off for the remainder of the video chat because yeah i'm turning it off <laughs> maybe next time i'll just do water i don't even know what that was guys but i'm like chilled out right now no but um yeah plain and simple don't lie on a freaking resume i don't care that your friend got a job at macy's being a high high manager because she lied about working in retail for 10 years it is not worth it it doesn't always work and you can end up like this guy right here ending up in a job that you're gonna be like can you give us an example of your work chat <sighs> it's really plain and simple it's really like this was like a yes or no question should i lie on my resume no why because they're gonna ask you to do the job you know what i mean it's like really think about it honestly just save yourself that's really all i have to say to that <laughs> drum roll please <laughs> okay we're finally gonna get our story submission babes okay you know what it is i think i need some lunch this smoothie is not cutting it i don't think that smoothie is cutting it just going to my gmail here if you want to submit a story Oh my god, I already signed in my Gmail chat. This is what I mean, y'all. Like, the email be empty. And I check it on my laptop usually. That's why I'm not, you know, signed in right now. I'm just signing in. MGDST at gmail.com. Submit. Thank you. Comment down below what you're having for lunch while I type this. I'm actually starting a gluten-free diet, not because I'm trying to lose weight or be annoying, but I think I have a genuine <sighs> gluten allergy that is going unnoticed by doctors. I don't know why. I have an appointment with an allergist coming up soon. Not for that, but I'm going to mention that. I'm almost there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is not my most favorite episode. I'm not gonna lie to you because I feel like uh, I feel like that threw me off. And then oh shoot! Wait, I think 
for a while I thought I got two stories and because this person was like your content is great I hope you're having a good year so far I thought someone was genuinely reaching out to me no y'all ready I'm ready I'm so excited okay Miss Ma'am, Miss Papas, Miss Mamas, this is your story. You must get into it. I refer Zanji to T submission. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the second one, let me know down below. I'm going to bring all my energy to you because you deserve a good, you know, you've been waiting for some months. Okay. Um, I'm going to rack up all this energy and get ready to give you advice because I'm really excited. Um, I don't know who this is in real life. I'm really, I don't know at all. And I'm going to keep it very, mm -hmm. um, What's it called? Anonymous. Because I don't know, you know, well, what they're going to say. But let's get started. This person titled this Tea Time says, okay, period. I'm so excited, y'all. I know I'm not showing it because apparently my steam right here got me tired. But um, she said, or he says, hello, love your page and your clothes are so defined. Hope you're doing it. Girl, you know, you know, I worked hard for this. Thank you. Thank you. Kisses, hugs. Okay, um, I come here because I need some advice. I'm just choosing, like, I'm so happy someone submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Submit. Submit below. Because look at how happy I get. Like, this is generally something I'm really happy about. But anyway, okay. They said, you see, I'm in a little rough situation. Hold up, because this part, they want me to just read it for myself. Okay, yeah, they just want it to be anonymous. So, I already said that. Um... Okay, I was in a relationship for almost three years with this guy. Let's call him Mason. <laughs> um, I just know a little baby named Mason. But anyway, Mason was pretty popular. Everyone knew him. He was like two years older than me. He was the type of guy that when he walked into the room, everyone wanted to talk to him. And people found him really attractive, especially because he's Puerto Rican. Okay, sis. Um, he was really easygoing. <laughs> um, too friendly. I don't like my men too friendly. <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you right now. What's so funny? Why are we so friendly? <laughs> um, despite that he was older than me, he wasn't mature. Red flags, sis, sis, the red flags are going up. The red flags are going up. I hope you're seeing them, because I'm seeing them. Are y'all seeing them? Comment down below. Um, I've always been really mature since a young age because of circumstances. Especially in a Hispanic household. Okay, so you are also Hispanic. So I'm getting the dynamic here already. I'm also Hispanic. I don't know if y'all know that. But, um, when your parents are very strict, like, let's calm down. But also, I've noticed they're less strict on Hispanic sons. Y'all little lucky asses. Honestly, y'all got the look and the good treatment and the look. Y'all can go out wherever y'all want late at night. Man, forget y'all. And especially in a Hispanic household, you are pressured into these exceptions, expectations, there's a typo, and there's always a lot of emotional trauma. You're telling me. In any household where there is strictness, it's a lot of trauma, honestly. Um, I love my people, I love my gente, but they were also, not gente means people, but I love my gente, pero, <laughs> like, she didn't say that. Oh my god, not the, the Dominican jumped out. He said, I love my gente, pero, like, a veces, which means sometimes, when they criticize, it does really hurt. No, it does hurt. Like, why are you talking to me? Are we family or do you hate me? Like, what's tea? When I was with Mason, I was in my best years, really fit and into working out all that jam. These years meant a lot to me because when I was younger, I was really overweight. Oh, losing all my weight and gaining confidence really made me cherish these years. It's kind of messed up because he used to make fun of me because of my weight. It's kind of messed up because he used to make fun of me because of my weight with the group of people when we were younger. When we got together, he said he would stand up for me sometimes, but it was hard because he was really close to them. Here's my thoughts on that. Because I've been in that situation before. But people used to make fun of me for my weight. I don't know if y'all can ever tell. Um, I am a chubbier woman. I don't really like to showcase that because you know I have my own struggles, my own securities, my own like I like to keep my body to myself. I don't like my body to be perceived, really. That's what it what it is. 
So, one, congratulations on losing weight. Losing weight is fucking hard, okay? People say gaining weight is hard. I think losing weight is a little harder, in my opinion. I'm sorry. It's coming from someone who's been around their whole life. Um, so, congrats on losing weight because I know it's hard. Um, but I've noticed when people are younger, they just talk they don't even mean it sometimes and not to say that that's acceptable but people when they go up they should be apologizing to you i've had a lot of people apologize to me for what they used to tell me and i think that they wholeheartedly meant that when i was in a relationship with mason things started turning into things started turning into a drastic turn random girls would hit him up at first he wouldn't do anything but he would be too friendly with his friends who are girls back then i would get really jealous because he made me feel not enough comparing me to his girlfriends like homegirls um he would contradict himself all the time i'm still stuck on this comparison because that's where you would have i would have been like okay we can break up you're not gonna compare me to your friend like what are you doing I've never compared my boyfriend to any of the guy, little, little bit of guy friends I have. I never do that. Like, you just, that's just not something you do. He would get mad at me for having guy friends and telling me to put distance with them. Yeah, shut, yeah, shut the hell up. <laughs> that's what I be saying. Was, shut the hell up. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I gotta be um pressing the camera to play again after like 20 to 30 minutes. Also, I'm feeling much more awake. What? Do y'all see what just happened? Okay. Kind of. What the? Hello. I cannot. Like, no one's gonna submit again because of this. Like, I'm not gonna. But My camera is killing me today. Stop fucking playing with me. Are you done? I think she's done. Um. Anyways. Yes, after a certain amount, a limit of time, I have to always go back and press play. If anyone knows how to fix that, please let me know. I really don't know how to fix that, but, um, oh, I was saying shut the hair alert. So that comes from this, like, Dr. Phil clip I'll put in right here or whatever, but, um, don't, don't tell me that. First of all, I'm letting you have friends. If my camera don't stop playing with me, <laughs> okay, first of all, first of all, hold on, oh my god, I'm, ugh. all right, I think we're good acting up excuse me for all of that anyways um where, where was i yeah i'm letting you have friends don't be trying to come over here on some you know for me okay personally i feel like relationships should be 50 50 for the most part like it should never be like 90 20 like, mm, like have some balance at least 50 60 70 50 you're pushing it but can we keep it even? Can we make it fair? Don't, like, if you give your partner some rules, I feel like you should respect those and do the same thing. That's my opinion. Comment down below if you agree with that or if you disagree, let me know. I've never been the girl who is all over their guy friends. Um, I wouldn't even hug them anymore because I didn't want my sin to get upset. I'm Hispanic. It's in my nature. No, I get that. I do. Um, In Latino culture is very this is why i say i'm people perceive me as rude because i don't give a fuck like don't touch me <laughs> um i don't even know what's going to that no but um in latino culture it's very normal to hug people give them a kiss on the cheek and things like that like i said i'm not friendly so i don't even follow that culture that culture was out the window because not everyone i meet is hispanic and i don't care no i'm not gonna touch you you know what i mean so <sighs> for me personally i feel really bad for you that you are changing your ways to make someone not upset there's already what seems to be a communication issue and relationships cannot flourish without communication i've said this in episodes before let's continue but i'm always i've always been the type of girl who always had more guy friends than girls that's your business that's your business um he knew that too and not trying to sound like a pick me um because hell no i just grew up so she said, I'm not trying to sound like it's pick me because all my guys, my friends are guys. Like, I get that. Um, I've always been really. I knew the light was turning off. Do y'all? I'm keeping these parts in to this video so y'all can see the reality of filming YouTube videos. Okay. My light just turned off. I was like, why is the room dark? 
and I just peeked. <laughs> Let me just make sure I'm still um recording too. Chat is my laptop off. The audio's still going in, but let me fix these lights. I'm even the same. I'm not even kidding. Like stupid lighting. You see, the lighting is right. I knew there was a dim. Usually when my lights dim down, I know it's because I got shut off. But anyway, girl, let's give you this tea. Because you deserve it and you submit it. If you want to submit a story below, my name's on the screen. Email's on the screen. Okay. So back to you, back to you, back to you. So she's saying, I'm not a pick me girl because I have all guy friends. It just happens that way. That's understandable. Some girls are just much more feminine. They attract much more males or however it works. I don't really know how it works because I've only ever really attracted girlfriends, homegirls. Um, maybe because I push the guys out. Who knows? Okay, she explains. So she grew up with her guy cousins all the time. That makes sense, yeah. Um, it gets you in a state where you just become someone who is really straightforward. Yeah, it seems like a lot of guys like to keep um, women friends around that are very honest. Um, and for a woman perspective is what it seems like that I've seen. She says that she's been really, she's always been really bad with her words. I would be too straightforward with people or just say things that they wouldn't want to hear. Honestly, I'm gonna keep reading. Um, especially the girls in my grade at the time, I would just say how it is. If I see a girl putting someone down to make themselves look better in front of um, someone or just in general, I would call the girl out. People would tell me no one wants to hear those things. That's why it was hard for me to be friends with girls, despite him knowing that he was limiting me all the time. I hope you haven't changed. Like sometimes we need people in the world like that that just say how it is because the world can be a lot of fluff that's just the truth i don't think i'm that person that says it how it is but i've been friends with that girl that does say it how it is and i will say it's not pleasant but it's needed and sometimes we need people like you in the world so hopefully he doesn't end up changing you girl but um so the story keeps going there was this one guy friend who i was really close with at the time let's call him alex basically started hating alex a lot why you got your friends why you mad let me stop he even thought alex had a big crush on someone else alex is older than me by three years i think currently we don't talk no more because of the drama later our friendship became really toxic so i stopped being friends with him because it was affecting me turns out he became best friends with my ex me so now that's why guys be like this is why I don't talk to men. Like, they be fake as fuck. Like, that's funny. Like, y'all, yeah, bye. I see how y'all move. Bye. Mason and I were always going on breaks, and it was like he gave up mid of the relationship. He lied to me a lot and just became toxic. I put my everything into it. Heck, like, his dad liked me, but his mom hated my guts. I really tried to get her to like me. In the beginning, she liked me, but slowly started to hate me. I don't even know why. Um, I have a theory. <laughs> I'm like light bulb. Um, usually, I don't want to say usually, but my theory is here in this scenario. It seems like mommy o was a, or Mason was a good old mama's boy. And usually when you're a mama's boy, you tell the tea, um, unfiltered is what i've seen and he probably was telling your mom his mom how he really felt about you and was probably like so so leave her so leave her so leave her and mason's probably like oh i don't want to keep seeing her keep seeing where it goes or whatever the hell he was saying dad was probably not getting no tea <laughs> he was probably just like my son has a beautiful girlfriend i'm proud of him you know and this accent i just put on but um, I would help her out with her events that she does for little kids. I would volunteer to be her assistant and do my best. He was never good enough for her eyes because she made her decision on you. I'm telling you, somebody was putting stuff in her ear. Who else would have been putting things in her ear rather than other than her son? And then there's that. And then not only that, but um, I feel bad because you're just giving yourself. And she's like, mm, I don't fuck with you. Like. She's also very immature, like, as an adult, that's not your business. Unless the son is lying to his mom about you, saying you're doing things to harm him or hurt him. That's different. You know what it is, too, probably? Like, you guys are getting to fights, and then 
he would just tell his mom we just fought oh and my mom was like what she say what oh what was said and you said petty stuff you said petty stuff she's like oh well, that's what she thinks about you and you know no parent wants to hear someone talking negative about their child this is my theory comment down below what you think so far mason would reply back to girls dms and say it's nothing that they were just friends and there was two girls in particular he told me not to worry about right after ended our relationship he got with one girl talking about present time now he literally drove out to see her she lived like two hours from where he is to get some cootie to get some cooter is my theory um it's not even my theory like i think anyone would assume after two hours that's what you're driving for yeah i don't want to hurt your feelings but i think that's what that was um when him and girl one ended because she ended up liking this other guy let's call him david david actually was in a relationship with my friend my close friend so then mason got with the girl too and right now they're still together mess because she had a boyfriend while being with mason yet he was okay with that i don't know if she broke up with her boyfriend all i know is mason and her are still together how old are y'all sis because you never said your age you never said your age sis and i'm wondering like what grade are y'all in <laughs> i'm trying to understand because i'm trying to understand where y'all at maturely like where things are going i was really hurt in the beginning when i found out that he was with those two girls they were the girls he told me not to worry about it's almost going to be a year and a couple months since our relationship ended also did you say that they got yeah, so he, he got with those people after y'all broke up. Okay, I was gonna be like, did it go over your head? Like, he was cheating. No, he wasn't. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I apologize in advance. Because, because I know, you know, you see, I'm trying. I'm trying. Let me wrap it up. I have one person who like left charge and I'm charging by this in here. It says it's fully charged. It's not. Listen, anyway, let's get to this. Let's get to this story. So we're almost done. Um, so yeah, she's just saying like, you know, David and blah, blah. Um, I was really hurt in the beginning when I found out that he was with those two girls and they were the girls he told me not to worry about. It's almost going to be a year and a couple months that our relationship ended. I'm paying the price for my weight again. Um, when I was with Mason, I got really depressed. He gave me depression. So I started working out more and starved myself. Sis. Somehow I got in this habit of stress eating. Gosh, I'm trying to lose all the weight I gained. Oh, it's been really hard. I got an overmason a couple months ago after I ended the relationship. I really cried every single day. Like, I wouldn't leave my room. I was holding on to the things he gave me. I would sleep with the objects he gave me. Worst part is we see each other all the time. To this day, we still do because some of the activities we're in. But how I got over him was surrounding myself with people that cared about me. And they helped me get the courage to fight, the, to fight for myself before becoming happy. One day it all hit me hard and I worked hard on myself and other things. That's how I got over him. When I see him, I don't feel anything at all. I truly don't have feelings for him. I'm actually been talking to this one dude for a long while since November last year. Oh God, we are friends but we're just waiting for the right time. Since we both are working on our careers, I just don't know how to deal with my low self-esteem. I don't know how to find confidence with this weight. I have been eating healthy and working out like crazy. I want to truly love myself to be the confident young woman I once used to be. I was really talkative and would just connect with anyone. After him, I became really shy, um, self-conscious, forgot how to be myself, and I don't know how to be myself in these people from my past. Darling. Look at me. It's you and me right now. It's still you in them. It's still you in there. My first thing I'm going to say is, it's still you in there inside of yourself, below the weight, below all the trauma, all the situation. It's still you inside of you because 
who sent this email you think broken you sent this email or you think who you want to have sent this email she's trying to come back out i truly believe there's hope for you babes like i i've been in a situation where i felt so pushed to this point i resonate with you and i understand um i'm so happy that you found the courage to talk to someone new and it's been a year okay and i hope y'all are doing well and y'all are moving forward in a healthy way um as far as that goes romantically speaking how long did you and this guy date hold on you was dating this guy for three years so like people always say don't be in a rush you know take that self time when we get into a relationship it is true we become who we're with um even if we have our own hobbies and hobbies and stuff our life revolves around we live revolve around each other we become each other we have hobbies together we have activities together like you said you still see him um make sure you take that time out for yourself and do what you love that doesn't involve being around him i don't think it's healthy to be around him honestly um you didn't really go into detail about how the relationship ended like what was your final straw um but i'm sure maybe it doesn't matter um but as far as it goes for you like here's what helped me like i said i'm a really thicker girl so weight is truly an issue for me like for real for real um i've had a lot of doctor's appointments and therapy sessions revolving around it my love life once revolved around it like i understand in you know hispanic culture hispanic culture especially like they be drawn they be like, doing the most with like the weight loss and weight talk like honestly and truly you have to mature and realize that not mature but realize you're above these people your weight is yours you know you're weight situation game loss that's your business however what we're not gonna do is let people control that okay you are in control of that and what do you think is healthy for you is healthy for you i'm not here to tell you how much you weigh is unhealthy how much you lose is unhealthy or is healthy like that's for you to decide you to speak with doctors about etc you're going up too. talk to a doctor and see what's really going on what if it's what if you're eating fine you know make an appointment with the nutritionist to see if you're eating balanced meals get back on routine and um especially with hispanic households like we i have found that we really have a portion control problem um and we are t prone to eating more like i think like italians do i don't i'm sorry if you're italian and i'm wrong i'm not italian so i don't know but that's what i've heard that y'all like to eat a lot a lot of carbs and a lot of food and big variety and big amounts but um that's what i would say in regards to the health and i know please think about what you're doing because i just see so much of my younger self in you like in that last paragraph where weight was just so heavy for you it seems like you're moving past this guy but now you're dealing with the trauma that's left behind and weight can carry such a heavy weight on you and not only physically but like mentally and i have found that I've been in very bad cycles with weight loss and gyms, and I even got to the point where I hated gyms, like, hated gyms, hated diets, still hate diets, honestly. Um, I had to turn the gym to my mental health space. I no longer go to the gym thinking about how much weight I'm going to lose if I do this one workout, how many months it's going to take for me to lose this much weight. I don't do that anymore, and I used to do it all the time to take measurements all the time don't do that anymore it's not if you're not training to be a bodybuilder or something like don't even put emphasis on that um of course if you have to meet goals i understand you know just incorporate in tiny little goals throughout your day and i'm sure you will see progress with that weight loss you want like oh i'm gonna eat sure i eat fruits today i'm gonna make sure i have broccoli with all my meals today Girl, you know what i'm talking about so there's ways to do that in a healthier manner um i used to binge eat myself i used to have binge eating disorder i wouldn't say i guess i'm not used to have because i still deal with it it pops out sometimes when i'm having like a really 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 bad low moment um 
it comes out so you know what helps me is like you know what you need to get that binging out do it on something healthy just do it on something healthy if it's really that serious because this is a routine that we're used to um eating disorders are considered learned behaviors um so you know i think the first step is to switch what you're binging to something healthy so that you start to you know get to a right spot that's what i would say as far as health and weight goes start journaling and start buying a good book uh, books really books and movies i don't know if you guys agree with this books and movies really help me forget what i'm what i'm dealing with and puts me in like the shoes of people so like when I watch a movie, I forget that I'm even a person and I feel like I am in the movie as a character there, as a completely different person. That's just me. Maybe I just have like a detachment issue or something, but I love watching movies and forgetting about all my problems. And I think I recommend watching movies to anyone when you're really going through a low point. Um, I wouldn't say watch bad movies, but just watch movies that are entertaining, you know, what the people are talking about these days, Squid Games. Um, Insecure season five coming out this month. You know what I'm saying? Like things like that. Um, journaling, journaling has been really great for me. I used to journal a lot when I was younger, and then I stopped because I was like, "Who has time for that?" I'm just talking about my feelings on paper. Trust me, journaling is like taking a chunk out of your clogged brain and just like chilling. That's really what it is for me. And working out too is like taking my body tense body that's like anxious and angry and mad at the world and just relaxing okay so that's another one and then taking it slow with the new partner take it slow take your time and go out to more events um that's what i would say the last part is go to events i know kobe is happening and we can't use keywords anymore is what they're saying so um you know, I know that's still happening. So, you know, go to places with your little mask on, meet people, people. There's paint and sips. Um, there's sports games. Like, you know, do you have siblings? Hang out with them. Your cousins, your guy cousins, like, where are they? You know, go hang out with them. I know you miss them. I know they're your people. So, make your friends again. Be friends again with guys. Fuck it. Like, he's gone. It's done. That's like, whatever. That's like a part of your past. It's not even important anymore um and when you see him i mean i'm different i don't like to be cordial sometimes i just be like you hurt me and fuck you i'm not talking to you i don't know if you're saying hi to this guy every time you see him or whatever but i wouldn't pay him the whole time of day honestly because he's past you you're grown now he even said like he was not that mature so what you doing taking care of children that ain't yours come on sis and um last but not least keep your head up Keep your head up. I don't know. You you don't really tell me tell me like what grade you're in because you said school. So I'm assuming you're still in school. I'm, you're giving me high school vibes. What I would say is work towards your future. Graduation's coming up. I'm assuming for you work on what you like. Find new hobbies that you like. I heard joining sports is very distracting. After a breakup, it's very good. Um, and my number one thing is don't get scared of food. It seems like you're getting there. I don't want you to get there. Have fun with food. Try new things. Try new recipes. TikTok is like the place. Okay, so just go on TikTok. Find cool recipes. Try healthy recipes. All the healthy girls is on TikTok. Okay, babes, like they over there. So I hope this helps. Okay, our friend Angie does tea submission. Can we give her a round of applause? It's really not easy to sit down and send an email to somebody, to a YouTuber, a person you don't know, and hope that they'll read your story. Like, I get it i get it you see these stories you see these youtubers do this and you're kind of um hesitant about submitting all i can say is i hope i gave you a good show a good example of um advice i have to offer i did have a very bad day today clearly a very bad content making day um filming day so i hope that didn't <laughs> deter you from submitting um but yeah guys i'm gonna continue searching for stories on reddit we got just one submission if you want to be the second one and keep adding to this amazing feeling that i feel right now which is like very content very happy very like whole and i'm very happy that people are submitting stories and you're feeling courageous enough to do so like i applaud you like i said 
Just give a round of applause. I hope this advice helps you. If you feel comfortable commenting down below if it was helpful or not. Um, and after I do read advice stories or situations, I do email the people back or, or my plan is to start emailing the people back. Say, hey, you're in this episode. Here's the link. And that's just that. You know, keep it very simple, very easy. So people aren't like scrambling which episode was I in. And yeah, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope there's no blueberry in my teeth. Um, I gotta go make lunch. I'm not gonna do that scent again or essential oil for this. I told you it was cheapy. Look, I just pushed it up and turned it on. Embarrassing me, cha. Anyways, I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my day. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I hope this audio works. I hope all of it works. Okay, being a YouTuber is very hard. It is. I mean, I'm sure you think it's just an easy put makeup on, sit down, and talk. <sighs> it's really not. Especially for us who are very emotionally driven and our work revolves around our emotions. Um, I really wasn't having a bad day today. I was just having a like whatever day. And I think that shows. So, um, yeah, guys. Anyway, my Reddit, if you want to follow me on the screen, my Instagram on the screen, email to submit to the story on the screen, link to the rules to submit down below, and the email to submit a story do the same down below and thank you for watching episode five good morning good night wherever you are and i will see you in the next don't forget to subscribe and like this video and if you want to see other zany to i have a playlist in my um youtube as well